I guess Charlotte Mabel Hound wants to be in this with me. Super 8 from 2011. Super 8. <gasps> Super 8 from 2011. Does not have a whole lot of big name actors in it. Um, Ella Fanning, memorable primarily at the time, especially as the sister of Dakota Fanning, child actress who transitioned into more adult roles. Super 8 is not driven by the major action star with the memorable name, but it is a great story. At one level, there's a lot of very repeated science fiction sort of things. Uh, the, the crashed alien wanting to rebuild his ship, wanting to get away, the military wanting to exploit the creature. Uh, being set in the past, it is set in 1979. We hear the references to Three Mile Island incident on the news at the beginning, and it gives it that feel of being in an earlier time. The Cold War is still very much a thing and the discussion of whether the Russians are behind bad stuff. <clears throat> I just reviewed Krull a few minutes ago, and this is a perfect example of that invisible something that sets off a, a, a good movie from a bad one that sets them apart that Krull just didn't feel like it ever got compelling even you know it was filled with all of those things that come in from sci-fi and fantasy genre were there but they just didn't grab you for some reason whereas there's nothing particularly uniquely ingenious about Super 8 um, are mostly a cast of kids we get to see it through their eyes um, the alien, the crash ship, the technology, the desire for the technology, and yet the way that Super 8 comes together makes it feel more compelling. It is different in the sense that it is against the backdrop of the kids trying to film a movie about a, basically what we piece together as a zombie apocalypse. They accidentally catch footage of the train or they are there when the train crashes in the movie. They want to tie that into their film. And what I couldn't help thinking by the end is that uh, as good of a movie as it is on its own, how much it, it's, it comes together as the story of this interspecies communication gone horribly awry or maybe a little bit fixed by the end or at least smoothed over some with the sense that not all humans are evil, uh, the return of the creature to space. I had this sort of this feeling after having not seen it in 2011 when it came out, not seen it till today, I had a feeling that it, it, it was like Stranger Things, that whether Stranger Things, the series, is, uh, was influenced by it or not, but very similar, revolving around a set of children, their relationships at first, how that interacts with adults, being set in the early 80s, only a few years after the events of... of Super 8, um, and that the good job they did of capturing the feel of being in that time with the, the vehicles, the clothing, the music, the things that were going on in the world. So there seemed to be a, a, a strong correlation, at least, between those things. And they are both, in the very least, examples of that sort of period piece done well. Nothing about what happens in Super 8 feels like a parody Whereas it could have with Krull. Krull, if you added in a comedic writer and some jokes, it might have been a really good Robin Hood Men in Tights version of that genre. Uh, nothing about it feels that way. I think the only complaint I have at all about the movie Super 8, and I'm sure it was just part of the, uh, the ambiance they were trying to capture, is it is very dark. I mean, visually dark. It's filmed very dark, particularly when we see the creature we don't see the creature very clearly. And again, maybe that's intention, intentional for suspense, intentional for you don't look for flaws so much in the model and the special effects, Or although by then I'm sure most of this was computer graphic generated. Um, but it was so dark that you felt like you were struggling to see, and it was like, well, gosh, I really want to see this, and I'm not seeing it. Um, a little bit like DC's Titans, especially the first season felt that way in some places they were they made it more real by it being very dark in that sense it didn't come off as as 60s batman parody-ish 
but it was so dark it was like I can't see and there were places where Super 8 felt like that but overall it was an incredible movie that was a very good story and again it was pieced together well and it captured that sort of invisible something that makes it much more enjoyable than, than films that don't have it.